The plan for today is to get started on the electrical system. So I've quite a few parts that will need to be installed to get everything going. This electric fan I'll be using for the radiator. This is a cable for the battery. I have a couple different fuse blocks uh, to pick from and a grounding bus, some extra wires. That's the old wiring harness that came off the Chevy. Um, hopefully I have things labeled well enough because I don't remember basically anything about it. It was a few years ago I took it out. I have a, this is a, the Wideband O2 and the computer is a MS3 Pro. So we'll be going through installation of all these things and starting all this is the plan for today. This is the computer I'll be using. So this is uh, Mega Squirt. It's MS3 Pro Evo, I guess. I've done a Mega Squirt build once before. That was seven or eight years ago. It was a Mega Squirt 2 on a, just a small block Chevy. So I'm a little bit familiar with it, but to be honest, I think I've forgotten a lot of what I learned about it at that time, and I haven't driven that vehicle in quite a while. But anyway, I did kind of like the Mega Squirt. This computer is a huge step up over the Mega Squirt 2. This has way more functionality than I need for an airboat. Uh, it's basically overkill. So why did I go with this one? Well, partly was because, um, well, I think it'll be an interesting um, learning curve. I probably will want to use a similar computer to this on other projects going forward. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll learn on this, even though I'm not going to be using a huge amount of the functions that it has, like it has traction control and uh, boost control and all those things which I won't be using. But um, anyway, maybe uh, it'll be a, a good learning uh, platform uh, to get back into it. It wasn't cheap. Uh, it is quite a bit cheaper than like say the Holly Dominator and things like that, but probably would have been cheaper to go just to stick with the GM computer. I also could have just done the Mega Squirt and Micro Squirt or an MS2 even. So it's kind of, I guess, a middle ground and expense. It has a ton of functions some of which hopefully I can learn about. Anyway, that's the reason why. So that's the computer itself. Apparently it also has some water resistance, which I guess is useful for a boat. It comes with these harnesses. Um, and then I didn't buy the GM specific one. I'll be splicing in these into the GM harness. And then the other thing that I have for it Well, of course, the wideband will connect into this as well. That'll be a separate thing. And then I also got this uh, USB connector. So uh, that should be a neat thing. What I would like to do is, um, it's a Bluetooth actually, USB to Bluetooth. Um, so what I'll do is Bluetooth the engine data and parameters to a tablet, and that's gonna be my gauges. So we'll see how that works. That'll be down the road. I plan on mounting the computer in the battery box. It's a huge box, I got tons of options, but I think I'll probably just put it somewhere convenient to probably put it somewhere around there. So here's uh, these remnants of the old Chevy uh, wiring harness. 
So I actually forgot that I kept the fuse block. So I could use that. I'm going to think about that. It definitely has more power feeds than I need. So I might use it. Well, I'm going to think about it. It might be more convenient to just start fresh with a small block or I might use that fuse block that most of it's been gutted already. And then these are all the sensor wires. These will splice in to the harness I have from the Mega Squirt. And the other thing I have to do is switch over the injectors, um, the connectors, because I'm using um, uh, aftermarket injectors. So I'll, I'll change those connectors over first and then start basically just mocking up the harness and seeing how it lays out and then decide how much of it I'm gonna use. The engine donor was a 2003 Chevy Silverado. It used this mass airflow sensor, which I'm not going to use. Um, and I guess this has a built-in air temperature sensor. So I'm not doing that. I'll be using uh, just speed density with the Mega Squirt. So I want to make a spot to put the air intake uh, temperature sensor in. This came off the side of the intake. And you can see that's where this came from. So that fits into there and you can see, well, it's dark and shadowy, but you can see into the actual intake. So I think uh, this is where I plan on putting the temperature sensor. I'm planning on using a threaded GM one from like a, on the, there's a part number that's available online. A 91 Chevy or a GMC Cyclone had a threaded one. I think a lot of other GM products did as well. So I'll be using basically that part number, buying a GM sensor with a, a screw in, and then I'm gonna adapt this so that I can screw the sensor into this, and that should be a good fit in there uh, without um, too much work. So this is definitely being JB welded by me to, to seal it up. And there's a little remnants of metal left in there, but most of this is just solid JB weld epoxy. So I think what I'm going to do, um, I could weld some stuff in here, but I don't think that's going to be necessary. I think what I'm going to do is just fill, because right now I have about a quarter inch there. So what I'm going to do is fill it up a bit more, and when that cures, then I'll drill a hole and tap it, and that'll be the sensor. It's just, uh, it's obviously not load bearing or anything, it's just purely to seal the sensor up. And I think JB Weld will be plenty strong for that.
So I've got it all filled up with JB Weld. It's still liquid. It needs to cure. So I'll let that cure overnight and then uh, probably tomorrow I'll come back. I'll drill a hole in it, tap it, and then the sensor will go straight into that. Okay, fast forward a couple days. And um, so this is now very hard. So that's the JB Weld epoxy. I received this sensor in the mail. So this is just a GM um, air intake temperature sensor. And it came with a pigtail. And then this is the tap. So it's a 3 uh, 18 NPT. And uh, so what the plan is, uh, is I'll drill and tap this and put that through there. Sure. What can I do, Daddy? Do you want to hold the video camera? Yeah. Okay. But what are you cutting? I'll show you. So then this comes out. So that JB Weld took the thread nicely, and I think this is going to work quite well. So it's a it's a tapered pipe thread, so that'll go in there, and it'll it'll get tight enough. I'll put some sealer on there as well. And then this has a little rubber gasket. It bolts into the intake. I think it sticks out uh, eh, just far enough. So I'm quite happy with that. That was quite easy. I'll get that bolted in, and we'll move along. And that's the air temperature sensor mounted up in the intake manifold. So I think that worked pretty well. One more thing to do, of course. I've been working on the wiring harness and it's actually, um, the wiring part is mostly done. And as with wiring in general, everything kind of looks worse than it is. And, you know, taking it like wire by wire, it's actually not too bad, but it, it takes a while to put it together. So I've replaced all the ground. So most of this is the Chevy, the factory Chevy wiring harness, all the, the um, connectors and things like that. So that's all Chevy and I stripped out everything that I didn't need. And then uh, I did take the time to label it all, which is quite helpful. Uh, the ground, that's been all kind of cleaned up. And then what I've done, so like these are all like say the various sensors are all labeled and then that all splices in to the mega squirt harnesses so these are kind of the uh, there's these two connectors that will plug into the that's the ms3 pro evo um, so these two they have i think they're eight feet long or something like that so there's plenty of length more than i need but i've left it long anyway and then these, all the wires coming from this harness, um, they're all labeled and there's, um, actually it's pretty easy to tell which, it's printed on them and there's also in the instructions, they're all, you know, color coded. So that's pretty straightforward. I've connected all that to the GM harness. And then for the other wires as well, I am, I did decide to splice down into the 
Um, this is the fuse block for the Chevy truck. Now I've gone through this fuse block and I've basically just taken out everything that I don't need. So a lot of it is gone, but I have a bunch of various, like say, you know, anywhere from 10 to, I think there's a couple of 50 or 60 amp feeds, um, and then both switched and non-switched. So that should have enough uh, options there to basically run everything I need for the whole boat. And um, so that should work pretty well. There is still a fair amount to do on this wiring still. Uh, part of it is going to be so mounting things. So mounting this fuse block in there somewhere. I'll be using this is the grounding bus. I'll be putting this somewhere and then running uh, a few more wires out and then running wires to more the the driver's position for switches and ignition switch and things like that. So I'm going to keep working on this and uh, I'll update you guys when I get all this tidied up. Obviously I'm not going to leave the wires loose like this. This will all be covered in wire loom and uh, tidied up. Thanks for watching.